Um, thanks, everyone. As many of you may know, this is uh, an honor for us to give this talk in, to celebrate the life of Effie Capsalis, who's a longtime member of the community. And um, I thought I'd let Sarah introduce uh, a little bit more about who Effie was, since she was working with Sarah so closely over all these years. Sure. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it means a lot to see so many friendly faces here, people who we've worked together for such a long time and are, are friends in the movement. You know, Effie was many of your friends. She was my friend and, and colleague for 15 years. Um, I'm just really grateful to be able to share stories about her today. And we've all lost people in the movement over time. And um, one way to keep their, their uh, legacy and their memory alive is to share stories about them. And it's really a comfort to be able to do that with you here today. I also think it's important to share Effie's story because her impact really runs in parallel to the story of Glam Wiki collaboration over the last two decades. I know she would be really proud of the strength of the movement today and of all the, the people who are here. And this continued impact of her legacy, uh, fostering work inside cultural institutions, I think has something, um, something that all of us can learn from. Yeah, I'm, one of my main connections with Effie uh, when I first started doing Glam Wiki work was how generous she was as um, the main person at Smithsonian Institution Archives who recognized the power of collaborating with this Wiki community, right? Um, and we'll go over a little bit uh, in later on, but it was not a given that museums and libraries would look at Wikipedia and go, oh, there's someone we should work with. So many of you folks who may have been involved with the movement very early on know that we didn't get a lot of meetings with the noted institutions in the glam sector when we first started. But Effie was one of the first folks from this space that said, we absolutely need to be working with the Wiki community. And I had my classes I was teaching um, in university at the time. And when I would out ask glam institutions if they want to host my students to do edit-a-thons, she was always eager. She would always ask me, when are your students coming? Which is great to see all the time. And this is one example where my students were with her at the Smithsonian doing an edit-a-thon. Um, it's amazing how much impact she had, and we just kept, kept running into examples in the last day or so uh, of folks asking about how do we do this better, how do we do that better, and we were pointing to work of Effie in how she broke ground in a lot of these areas, uh, not only embracing the community, but also pushing for institutions to open up their collections, which will tell you very specifically about those types of efforts. If we want to bring it way back uh, to kind of the origins of, of really <clears throat> the Glam Wiki movement and the way that Effie embraced it, um, I have a, uh, she's always going to be notable in my mind also because she was the first person who said the word Wikipedian to me. Um, it was the summer of 2010. We were colleagues. She called me up on the phone and she knew that like, I'd been kind of dabbling and editing a little bit, and I was interested in Wiki. And she's called up and she's like, guess who I met? Wikipedians in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I could not have been more shocked by her words because I didn't even understand what that word was. Like, it's like she said, I met wizards or Vulcans. I'm like, these aren't real people. This is just a website. What are you talking about? Uh, and she's like, no, no, they want to they talk to us about partnering and, you know, we're going to have another meeting and they're going to come back and we're going to teach curators how to edit. And it just, it was a delightful surprise because I didn't realize not only is there a community of people who uh, hold meetings, <laughs> they wanted to work with us and this, uh, this like-minded community was really, um, was eager to, to partner. So, uh, and that was really the beginning of Wiki Project Smithsonian in 2010. And you see this uh, photo from was taken at the National Museum of the American Indian. You see a, hard to see maybe in the back, there's Richard and some other familiar faces. And I love this photo too, because it's hot DC summer and Effie's dressed like a Italian movie star ready for the <laughs> Riviera. She was a very charismatic individual, so comes through here. Oh, that's you. Okay. So a after that 2010 meeting, I'll say we, we never really looked back. Uh, that was the beginning of a really great period of holding a lot of edit-a-thons, a lot of backstage pass events. You remember, it was like getting people, you know, behind the scenes to see the libraries, archives, and museums. And we started getting press coverage. It was kind of a new thing to see edit-a-thons at that time. Um, and Wikipedians in residence. We had some Wiki Loves events. 
Um, and then Wikimania was held in DC in 2012, which was a great way to make even, even more connection. So I don't think Effie and I would have guessed for all the energy uh, on behalf of the collaboration we would get an award, but we did. Thank you to the, the young Wikimedia DC chapter and a young James Hare. We got a, uh, a distinguished service award. Um, and I still keep this award in my office because it's such a good, a good memory of a, of a really great day and a really great time. Yeah, and the, the, it's interesting this came up just organically yesterday and Orange Mike is walking in and we're talking just about this. I don't know if everyone knows, but Effie was a major force for not just evangelizing Wiki inside Smithsonian and other GLAM institutions. She was a force for getting museums and libraries to open up their collections. So we now have the term open access that's constantly passed around in the museum world, but it wasn't that common back then. And one of the big blockers was museums and libraries worried about what happens to their revenue streams from merchandising and things like, why would I give away my digital files? Because anyone could print a t-shirt or a hat and I'm losing sales from my bookstore and from my store. And what Effie did was she did a study and she wrote a paper in 2016, and this is called The Impact of Open Access on Galleries, Libraries, Archives, or Museums and Archives. And it was really important for someone of her stature from Smithsonian to do an analysis and do a rundown of these case studies. I think she had 50 case studies that she did and said, you know what, there's no evidence you're losing revenue. In fact, a lot of folks who released their content gained in many ways, including recognition, brand deals, things like that. Just because you can download the file from the Met Museum doesn't mean that you get the Met clout. And they found that actually you have people who went up to the museums now after they discovered their collections were uploaded for free. So that was important to have this paper, which um, was constantly referenced by folks in the museum sector because she wrote this and presented it in many different places. So you can see, while open access may cause a loss in rights and reproduction revenue, it can lead to significant new opportunities in fundraising and brand licensing. Um, and what's really cool is that she didn't just put out a paper there, she actually went around and talked about it in major venues, right? Fears about loss of intellectual control of collections or reductions in the number of in-person visits due to open access are largely unfounded. And there are many uh, funding opportunities and other benefits from this. So as she went around, for example, at the Museums in the Web, one of the more influential conferences, um, I love that she gave it a more nifty title, give it a way to get rich. And that had a really great ring to it, such a great motto that she moved around the space with, right? Um, so this is in front of the major museums in this space. She even went to South by Southwest, it was even a bigger audience, right? Not just museums and libraries, and used the same title, even having more influence there. And I think this is definitely one of the papers people constantly reference to go to their bosses at their museums and libraries and say, hey, look, if Smithsonian says it's okay, let's start talking open access. And the dominoes started falling after that, right? Um, for example, the Met Museum, uh, Followed fairly shortly after that in 2017, Richard Nipel, myself, Effie were there to help them celebrate the opening. Um, I think Catherine Maher was there as well. So what's fascinating is that not only were these folks opening up their content, they were inviting us as Wikimedians to be in the room to launch it. It wasn't some abstract thing. It was a direct line of open content, get it on the world's most popular reference site and let wonderful things happen. And that was pretty powerful for her impact to be there. Um, we also had folks at Cleveland Museum of Art opening up in 2019. So the irony is that Effie broke down the barriers, but it took much longer for her own institution, Smithsonian, to turn the big ship of 21 museums and a zoo to do the same type of things. But she set the pace for the Met, Cleveland Museum, and other folks to do this type of thing first. So I don't know if you know, but this is something that is worth putting down in the record because this was uh, one of the big stories of us in the United States. Um, why couldn't we use all of Smithsonian's content on Wikimedia Commons? Um, it's a good question because Smithsonian's got lots of expired copyright, lots of public domain works from the government. And what you may not have known is that for the longest time, Smithsonian had this thing called terms of use. Um, so even though we knew from a copyright standpoint, all this digital content on Smithsonian's websites were free in every sense of the word, except the terms of use of the website said, you may only download this content for educational purposes, you need to get our permission. 
which is a big bummer, right? As Wikimedians, we're sitting there like, I want to click the download button and upload to comments, but we can't, not from a copyright standpoint, but from a terms of use standpoint. So imagine that, it's almost like the water's right there, but we can't drink it because of the, the website terms of use, okay? So again, not legally the, the copyright or the intellectual property, it was when you access this content on si.edu, you agree not to do these things. And we as Wikimedians can't agree to those things, right? So we couldn't use the content downloaded. But what's fascinating is Effie saw this and wanted to get around the problem. Said, we need to get this stuff to Wikimedians. So she initiated a lot of this movement on Flickr. So you know you can upload the content to Flickr and say it's CC0 or public domain or no known copyright restrictions. So she was a force even before Smithsonian could change her terms of use and we were encouraging Smithsonian to change it. She said, well, let's get started right away and uploaded thousands and thousands of photos and images here so that common folks could download them and use them, which is amazing. It's like she wanted to get things done really quickly and right away. So she also was working behind the scenes as well. So she set up meetings with the secretary of the Smithsonian with us as Wikimedians. So this is a, a meeting in 2017 where Catherine Marr, myself, um, and Effie was there setting up this meeting where we talked directly to the Smithsonian secretary to say, we'd love to use more Smithsonian stuff, but got these terms of use and it'd be great if you change that. And this is the opening or the starting to loosen the jar lid on the Smithsonian to say, let's think differently about the terms of use, right? Which was, you know, a legal thing for them to, to think about. All the while, Effie kept talking about the things that were important to Wikimedia, and so she embraced the whole Wiki Women in Red gender gap approach that we had, and was talking about this. This is at the Museum Computer Network, so she's talking to museum peers about Wiki activities and gender gap activities, and that was a big spark for other folks in this space to also look at their knowledge gaps and to start their own work in this area too. Um, and yeah, sir. And this, I'd say this important knowledge gap work, the awareness that was happening inside this movement that we needed to address the, the gap uh, in, in gender representation, um, her deep involvement there, I think really influenced her when the next opportunity presented itself, which was a, a congressional uh, act to create first the, uh, the Smithsonian American Women's History Initiative, and then what would become in, in 2020, the Smithsonian American Women's History Museum, a new museum that's going to be built on the National Mall dedicated to women's history. So when this opportunity came along, it was very clear to Effie, all right, we've got a museum, it's not gonna have a building for a decade, you know, government, the way things work. How can we start now achieving the mission of this organization, which is to collect, research, educate, disseminate the historical record of the accomplishment <clears throat> of notable American women? And she's like, well, there's, I know a place where we could do this. It's the Wikimedia platforms. So she laid a foundation immediately to start focusing the initiative and other work on, on Wikimedia as a primary way to deliver on the mission and to bring visibility to, to women's stories. And as part of that, she was able to hire Kelly Doyle to help with that work. And uh, to say I wish Kelly was able to be here with us today because she has so many um, important memories and stories to share too, and uh, Effie was a mentor and, and dear friend to her. But their work together, I mean, what a one-two punch, you know, to really um, move forward with um, with great energy to, to bring women's stories to light. And that work is still continuing today, so I encourage you to keep an eye out as the next couple of years unfold and you're going to see more and more wiki work coming out of the American Women's History Museum. And this is, this is one of my favorite photos from an edathon that we had in DC. And you can see this is on the cusp of the open access program at Smithsonian about to take root. And this is Effie there with Kelly, who's brought in as the, you know, the Wikimedia residence for the Women's History Initiative. Um, Jim Hayes, you can see a lot of the DC folks there, Rob. And it was just such a great time when we were starting to do so much gender gap work and open access was, was about to come around. So you can even see some ex Wikimedia Foundation employees in there as well. Um, so finally, February 25th, 2020, um, Smithsonian launches open access. You can see Catherine Ma was there, Ben Verschbau was there. We had so many folks that were there that they, they brought in. We even had a little booth demoing Wikidata, knowledge graphs and things like that. It was, it was great. Um, we had the secretary of the Smithsonian launch that. And, 
Um, what I didn't even realize until we're researching this, I remember it, but barely, is that Effie actually made a dress. Do you notice her dress there? It was made from an open access image of an eclipse. So she made custom clothing for her whole family that night, right? Out of open access materials. So that's pretty amazing. And we just had a, a great time there. Now, if, I don't know if folks know the significance of February 25th, 2020, or remember that time. It was like one week before COVID slammed everyone. And we can kind of like look back and kind of grin and smile, but it was weird. Because within weeks of that event, Smithsonian would shut its doors for almost two years, so no one could walk through the doors of a Smithsonian Museum. So what a strange and amazing time for open access to launch, and then Smithsonian saying, oh, you can't visit our museums for the next two years. But it was an amazing illustration of how open access was so important, because people could now visit Smithsonian content on Wikipedia and digitally online. Um, I thought I'd just throw this in here as some of the stats. When we launched open access Smithsonian, it was 2.8 million. Um, digital assets, and then now we're up to 5 million as of today, um, and growing. So I don't know if Ryan is in the audience here. Ryan there, Ryan from Smithsonian here is the manager for open access, and he's done an incredible job to continue this legacy of open access program from, uh, from FE going forward. Um, and just to run down some of those things, I'll just talk about the pictures, and I want uh, Sarah to talk about it. This is, these are just some photos from that night um, where we launched open access, it just felt like the end, not the end, but after 10 years of working on this, I remember Effie and I looking at each other goes, wow, we really played the long game and we got this done, didn't we? And that's where she was just like so energetic about it. Yeah, and I, you know, there's a few names listed here of people who have been advocates and uh, partners all along from outside the Smithsonian and within many, many of them staff. And I'll say it's, it, it's very heartening to me to see how many of these folks still today are engaged in the movement. And we've really, we've begun to foster a wiki community within our organization of 6,000 people. There are, you know, uh, four staff in this room right now that are, you know, excited to be carrying this work forward. So again, talk, talk about a legacy. It took, it took a while to, to really um, get rolling, but I, I feel like the momentum is, is really unstoppable. So, and we've had great partners in Wikimedia DC, in the foundation, and volunteers in this room. So again, you're all, you are all a part of this story very much so. So I'll just, I'll note, you know, the, the continuing story after we ran all those edit-a-thons and had all that activity in 2013, then we talked about Kelly and joining in 2019, open access, Andrew has been a stalwart, uh, since 2020 into, into the present as the Wikimedian at large. Um, and there's great exciting work um, coming up. I encourage you to come to a, a talk later today about uh, Wikibase and Wikinames at Smithsonian. Um, we've started an actual kind of meetup group, uh, Wiki Allies. It's sort of an internal um, club where we're trying to foster Wikimedian skills and activity within the organization. And I'm thinking a lot now about how to what kind of a model could that be for organizations to not just have bring Wikipedians or Wikimedians in residence, but also like mint them from within? How do we foster a community um, and really encourage that growth um, to, to meet the, the need of, of the expertise that we really need? Because one Wikimedian residence isn't going to be enough in most organizations. We need to be the Wikimedians ourselves. And of course, you know, if you came to the Wikimedian Residence talk yesterday, you heard a little bit about exciting uh, work happening on the Biodiversity Heritage Library and, um, and Jake's help in getting a Wikimedian in Residence dedicated to biodiversity information. And it's just great to see after the open access, we actually had tweets from the Smithsonian Secretary talking specifically about Wikipedia and going to edit-a-thons, and that's thinking about how far we've come from 2010, where we're trying to get a single meeting with a world-class institution. That's just incredible to think about. Um, and this is one of the last things that Effie wrote online before she passed, and I think this is so powerful. So I'm passionate about free and inclusive information, and the Smithsonian and the wider sector played an important role in producing free and equitable information. Together, we can create a new and safer space online so people of all backgrounds can access and use information regardless of race, class, culture, and gender. And I, I thought a great way just to end this is to just show you one of the things that got her so excited about all those things that she mentioned there coming together. So if you have your mobile phones, 
See if you can scan that QR code and bring this up. Now, a lot of Wikidata veterans, this may not be that new, but for a lot of folks you may not know, you can scan a QR code and immediately start playing with a interactive model that Wikidata query brings up. So um, see if you can bring that up. iPhones is really fast. I don't know about Android these days. You just tap on the QR code, just open it up. But hopefully when you click on it, you'll see something that looks like that, which is an example of a knowledge graph based on content that we have at the Smithsonian. And it all started, if you looked at it, with Mary Lincoln's dress. And it's how appropriate is it that starts with a dress, because Effie was known for her, her dress. Um, and we started with that object at the Smithsonian uh, American History Museum, and we started to say, what do we have in Wikidata that builds off of that? Oh, by the way, the designer of that dress was Elizabeth Keckley, and she was just not just an enslaved person who was a dressmaker. She actually, after being done with her White House stint, wrote a tell-all book about life in the White House, which is pretty scandalous at the time, saying she kind of poured out all the dirt that happened in the White House, you know, while she was working there. And then she went off to found um, an association to help freed slaves, and then she was the subject of a Philip Glass opera, or she was a character in a Philip Glass opera. And there's just no way you'd ever know all these connections unless you had something like Wikidata around. And this just shows all those connections that we have in Wikidata and you can interact with it. And this is just a great example of how we would send out this graph to folks to say, if you ever hear about the term linked open data and you have no idea what it is, this is what it is. And it shows it graphically and it shows it in a visceral way to say, oh, that's how I collect, connect my collections. Oh, that's how that artifact at the American History Museum connects to that artifact at the African-American History and Culture Museum, which, believe it or not, it's not easy to figure out within the Smithsonian. So Wikidata actually has better understanding of the connections of a lot of these collections than even the Smithsonian does at times. So I, I just love this because Effie likes showing this as the reason why we do our work, is to show the interconnectedness of the culture um, that we have. You know, we alluded to the change that happened with the pandemic, and it certainly took a huge toll on on all of us, uh, and certainly on on cultural institutions and glams. And it's a sort of uh, it's an irony because there were so many terrible things that impacted people. The the revenue that were lost for organizations meant that some museums had to close their doors forever. There is still a strain on staff and and resources and a, a real toll on the mental and physical health of workers. Um, at the same time, these organizations were pushed to accelerate their adoption of digital technology. If anybody was telling you digital wasn't important in 2019, they've certainly changed their view now, and they understand how important it is to be present in, this, in the spaces people occupy. So it's a new day and a new opportunity for us, I think, as Wikimedians, to once again knock on those doors and find out where we can um, partner, where we can be of service, where we can um, can really, you know, achieve our shared goal of of increasing access to knowledge for everyone. So it's a good moment for um, for us to re-engage with with glams as they emerge post pandemic. And this is our last slide. This is you. Yeah. So th thank you for for helping us remember Effie's legacy. You know, this is just one of our favorite photos of Effie speaking at the Museum Computer Network about the gender gap in Wikipedia and how Smithsonian is working on this. It just shows so many great aspects of Effie. She's dressed like Rosie the Riveter in denim. She used to wear, wore a denim jumpsuit to this talk, and it was great. Um, this is in front of a whole crowd of museum professionals. Uh, I love how powerful her hand is holding the microphone, but also trying to explain folk, to folks the passion of what she's doing, which is just classic Effie. So uh, thanks for um, remembering her legacy. And there's so many people in this room that have worked with her in some way or another. And uh, I hope you'll keep her legacy alive. Thank you. <laughs>